good evening as a part of economic reforms in this session let's discuss regarding agricultural reforms in india we already understood when we started our discussion regarding five year plans that india is basically an agrarian society and india depended so much on agriculture but in order to achieve self sufficiency we have given highest priority to agriculture in our first five year plan this is what we have understood because of the plan implementation because of the right monsoons at the right time because of the cooperation from the various sectors indian agriculture was a success and india became self sufficient with respect to the first five year plan by the end of the first five year plan the agricultural productivity has increased that is the reason why the prices have come down but when it comes to the second five year plan we have given highest priority to industries but agriculture was neglected that is the reason why by the end of second five year plan though we have achieved certain things in industry agriculture was considered to be a failure so there was a deficiency in the production that is the reason why the prices of the agricultural commodities has increased and that led to the inflation and that disturbed the economy of india that is the reason why when it comes to the third five year plan we have given again equal priority to agriculture and industry and since then agriculture was not neglected that is the reason why in every plan every government whether it is congress party janata party national front united front or nda upa or nda again every government is giving importance to the farming sectors that is the reason why if you look at the year 2020 the parliament of india has passed three laws with respect to agriculture but those laws were described as the anti farmer laws because the farmers in india have felt that these laws are going to create problems for the farming sector and we are not going to going to be happy with that that is the reason why huge protests have been taken place in india and delhi has been attacked during the time by the farmers by coming under pressure by the year 2021 the government announced the prime minister of india has announced that the government is withdrawing those laws meaning is simple the farmers won the battle and that is the power of the farmers in india clear we know that since the beginning we say that you know the farmers are backbone of our indian economy if the farmers are not cultivating what do we eat that is the reason why highest priority has to be given to the farming sector but the government has got its own you know priorities government said that it is going to double the income of the farmers by the year 2022 and with respect to that we have introduced these laws but the farmers were not happy and entire farming sector throughout the country supported the farmers that is the reason why government was forced to withdraw the you know this anti farmer laws during that particular year and again if you remember even in the year 2024 also the farmers have protested why what was the reason because when the farmers were protesting in the year 2021 the government invited them for the talks clear and out of that one one demand is to withdraw all the three laws fine and second demand was that farmers demanded that we need to have msp minimum support price in the form of an act so even today also we have msp but that is not an act meaning the farming sector was depending on the mercy of the government and the farmers made it very very clear we don't want to be under the mercy of anyone we want our right and msp must be legalized that is the demand of the farming sector 
but you know the government though accepted during the talks in 2020 and 21 but the government did not come forward to make a legislation on this so far that is the reason why you know the farmers have protested again so like but but overall if you look at the economic reforms in india especially with respect to agriculture reforms especially after this 1991 reforms though our economy is growing though our gdp is growing but even today also we are facing the problem of you know undernourishment so we are facing the problem of hunger in india right so what is this we are discussing right on one side we are saying that we became self sufficient in the earlier classes also i told you that our productivity agricultural production is increasing year by year and we have become self sufficient that is the reason why we are establishing more warehouses and godowns for the safety and storage of our food grains but on the other side the sad story is that even today also india is suffering with hunger india is suffering with undernourishment and malnourishment so there is no nutritious food that is reaching to the poor so obviously there is a gap between what we project and what exactly is happening in the society and all the students who are preparing for group 1 and group 2 you must understand this and especially those students who are preparing for ias you need to have the clear cut clarity on this how come we are saying economy is growing how come we are saying we, our agriculture productivity is increasing how come we are saying right we have achieved self sufficiency in agriculture on the other side we are saying there is a hunger there is a severe hunger and severe nutrition problem in india so there is no match at all so meaning something is going wrong so there are certain gaps that must be filled by the government meaning is simple though the economic reforms though the agriculture reforms led to the economic growth led to the self sufficiency but still there are problems in india i am clear so you need to understand these issues very very clearly and carefully and i am going to show you these points in the form of you know the questions let's look at the questions and answer the questions and let's go ahead clear so this is the first question on the screen look at this very closely consider the following statements right the farm bills passed in september 2020 i told you already are called anti farmer laws just now i told you it became a very big issue during the time right statement a is correct india being largely self sufficient in food grain production yes and having welfare schemes that's good but hunger and nutrition remain serious issues with india ranking as one of the worst countries in the world in food security parameters this is the truth and because you are going to be the civil servants my dear friends you have to be very clear with this kindly remember on one side we are saying that we became self sufficient but on the other side these are the issues that are present here is that okay so this is very much correct and if you look at the last line over there india is ranking as one of the worst countries in the world in food security parameters in india we say we have the largest public distribution system in the world but still we are facing the problem of you know hunger and nutrition is that clear next the farmers demanded the creation of minimum support price bill to ensure that corporates cannot control the prices very 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 important one this statement is also correct i would like to say something to you here my dear friends in the year 2021 as i told you 2020 and 
Farmers have protested against the three laws, farming laws passed by the parliament. The main reason for the farmers to protest is that government wanted that the produce, the agriculture produced can be sold anywhere in the country. What is the current system we have? In every state you have agriculture produced marketing committees. Agriculture produced market committees, APMCs. So these are the bodies that will purchase the food grains from the people. So that what is happening? So you can sell your produced within your state only. So that what will happen? So there will not be clashes with respect to the produced of one state in the other. So this is what exactly happened. But the laws that were passed by the parliament ensured that a farmer producing food grains in one state can sell it anywhere in the country. That too through online. Corporates can also enter into the this particular field. They can have direct dealing with the you know the farmers. So before the sowing begins, so you can go and speak to the farmers and you can go for an agreement and you can come to a final agreement that how much you are going to pay to the farmer after the you know the cultivation is done. Clear very very important one and obviously what will happen so because the farmers do not have the bargaining power farmers may lose it. So there is no concept called a minimum support price. But the government is saying that this is going to be helpful for the farmers because the corporates will be paying more. But how do you ensure they will be paying the more? So there will be different prices you know, in different states. There will be different prices in the same states in different areas. That is the reason why farmers firmly against this particular law. I am clear, very 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 important government organized online selling and online purchase. Government wanted to abolish APMCs at the state level so that the corporates will be entering into this. Once the corporates will be entering into this, that is going to be a demolition for the, you know, the farmers. That is the reason why the farmers said that these laws are anti-farmer laws. Am I clear? So if you look at this question, one, two, three statements. A, B, C, all the statements are correct. Am I clear? Very, very, very important. That is the reason why I want you to be very clear. All the students who are preparing for IAS group 1 examination, you make yourself very, very clear that economic reforms is not just a rosy picture. Absolutely, there is no doubt that India achieved, you know, the economic growth. There is no doubt about that one. But there are deficiencies. There are gaps. There are loopholes. And certain sections of the society have been exploited. And one section is the farming sector. I am a clear. Very, 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 very important one. So our answer should be option 4. I am a clear. From here, let's go ahead and check whether the answer is correct or not and it should be correct that's it clear got it so now let's go ahead and look at the another question another question very very important one again which of the following statements is are true regarding farmers protest in India just now I have explained to you regarding the farmer protest of 2020 and 21 plus 24. Clear if you look at this one, smaller states but richer. Punjab and Haryana are with the large surplus of food production. Even today also when we discuss about the, you know, the agriculture production, the surplus states are two. One is Punjab, second one is Haryana. Is that okay? States are small, but they are rich with respect to agriculture. That's the reason why when we discuss about agriculture, our first idea goes towards Punjab and Haryana. 
so statement a is correct these two meaning punjab and haryana are massive provider of food security to india we have a food security act so that every person should be able to have the food and you know get the food you know uh, every day that is called the food security and in order to uh, implement food security effectively you have to gather food grains effectively in order to gather food grains you have to somebody has to produce our farmers are producing and highest production is coming from punjab and haryana that is the reason why whatever they have produced the surplus that is being used with respect to the food security promises to the people of india clear statement b is also correct both punjab and haryana put together provide 70 to 90 percent of wheat and 28 to 44 percent of rice of india's total public distribution system write down these points even in the main examination also you are supposed to write these points to get more marks in the examination am i clear now the farming reforms are more sensitive issues in these food surplus states as compared to the other net food consumer states with negative food security like bimaru states meaning on one side we have punjab and haryana with a surplus food production but we have negative consequences with respect to some states because you know they are unable to reach and meet their food security needs and those states are bimaru states b i m a r u hopefully you know what is the meaning of a bimaru b i stands for bihar m a stands for madhya pradesh r stands for rajasthan u stands for uttar pradesh is that okay so in the examination tomorrow there may be a question which of the following are not one among the bimaru states or which of the following are the bimaru states in fact you know this is actually bimar is that okay bimar means sick sick with respect to food security sick means low production of agriculture to meet the needs of the people to right and to fulfill the obligations under the food security act clear and you know that is the reason why it is called bimaru right so please remember this all the statements are correct hence our option 4 should be the correct answer am i clear now let's go ahead my dear friends look at this look at this answer right look at this so i told you what is bimaru and the term bimaru was coined by maybe a question tomorrow coined by ashish bos during mid 1980s just remember this point got it let's go ahead look at this one more question on the screen consider the following statements again farmers began a year long protest in 2020 against the government's move to introduce controversial agriculture reforms we don't like your reforms that is the reason why we are against this true farmers groups called off their strike after the government scrapped the proposed farm laws in the year 2021 and agreed to discuss their demands including guaranteed price of produce and withdrawal of the criminal cases against the protesters maybe all of you remember what exactly happened in the year 2020 and 2021 farmers were against these proposals but the government went ahead and passed the bills in the parliament and it they became the last 
farmers knew very clearly if they are implemented that is going to be detrimental for them that is the reason why they have protested especially the farmers from punjab and haryana they have marched into delhi and they wanted to attack delhi that is the reason why delhi has been fortified right from all the four sides it has been fortified and nobody was permitted to enter into you know delhi but the farmers were very strong emotionally and mentally right and they came along with the families and they installed uh, tents over there and they started protesting in the you know delhi borders right so in the delhi borders they have started protesting and they stayed there for months together during because of this summer because of this winter because of this covid during the time so many people have died but farmers did not step you know right did not go back even by a step that is the reason why there was no other go for the government and the government had to call them for the discussions and the and the talks among the discussion is that first you need to scrap all the loss that should be removed that's it number 1 number 2 legalize minimum support price meaning bring a legislation with respect to minimum support price so that the farmers will be getting the minimum price for their produced clear number 3 during the protest you have you know imposed so many criminal cases on us and you have to take out all the criminal cases government agreed for that then only the farmers right the strong willed farmers withdrew the you know their protest and the farmers are back on strike again in the year 2024 saying that they wanted to remind the government of the promises made back then very 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 important one so whatever the promises you have made in 2021 that must be fulfilled what is that promise provide legalization legislation on msp take out all the criminal cases that have been you know launched on us during the protest time all the statements are correct hence our answer should be option 4 hope you are getting this very 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 important one be very cool very calm write down the points and you are going to be successful that's it a b c all the statements are correct one more question which of the following statements is r what are this in the year 2019 the finance minister of india mrs nirmala sitaraman announced a reduction in the base corporate tax from 30% to 22% very recently in our current affairs classes my dear friends i have discussed with you with respect to the personal income tax and corporate tax both are direct taxes personal income tax is paid by the individuals corporate tax is paid by the you know the corporates and we understood the contribution of the corporate tax is coming down since the year 2019 because of the reduction of the corporate tax it happened in the year 2019 and it was 30 it has been reduced to 22% by the government of india clear point number 1 correct and this reduction reduction of 30% to 22% is applicable for all the companies no it's not applicable for all the companies then the statement is wrong but for whom it is applicable i'll tell you the tax rate for the new manufacturing companies was reduced from 25 to 15% that's it but once you make sure that a is correct b is wrong then your answer should be straight away option 3 in the examination you need not read statement c because you are very sure that option statement b is wrong 
so if you remove statement b then your answer should be a and c am i clear very 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 important you should be smart enough right especially in the examination and if you want to be smart enough in the examination you have to become smart now you can become smart now by practicing more now is that clear and that is the reason why i am trying to explain the concepts in a very 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 detailed manner clear now look at this that, that's it so our answer is option 3 but note i have given the reduction of those companies clear what is the reduction corporate tax has been reduced from 30 to 22 percent for those companies that do not seek any exemptions meaning reduction is not for all the corporates but only for those corporates which don't seek exemptions this you have to be very 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 clear with respect to the examination am i clear next fine so next you know if you go to the next question again so many questions right and this is important for your examination consider the following statements india is largely dependent on indirect taxes very recently also we have discussed in current affairs is that okay direct taxes indirect taxes direct taxes are progressive indirect taxes are regressive that's what we have discussed is that okay so india is highly dependent on indirect taxes especially the tax levied on the sale and manufacture of goods and services that ordinary indians are dependent on them indirect taxes are imposed on everyone we have already discussed but when it comes to the direct taxes they will be imposed only on those people who are earning more than 3 lakhs per annum anybody who is earning less than 3 lakhs per annum need not pay any tax clear this is according to the latest slabs right but meaning is simple the poor people need not pay any income tax but whether a person is poor or rich everyone has to pay indirect tax equally right if it is 5% 12% 18 or 28 whether you are poor or rich you have to pay that's it that is, <coughs> that is the reason why more revenue is coming from you know the so called you know indirect taxes so this statement is very much correct b india is highly dependent on direct taxes gone by reading the first line itself you can see this statement is wrong we are depending highly on indirect taxes that's it so obviously our answer should be option 1 am i clear so that is the reason why once you understand the concepts answering a question is really very very easy that's it another very important point for you which of the following are the negative consequences of the economic liberalization in the beginning of this class i told you economic reforms is not just rosy for everything but there are certain negative consequences fluctuations in the commodity prices yes exchange rates and global demand for exports affected very badly the increased country's dependence on global market forces as it became more susceptible to external shocks and economic crisis so when we say globalization right it sounds very good in reality but the problem is that when the entire world is one when we are calling it as a global village if something happens in america that affects india if something happens in russia that affects india if something happens in gaza that affects india 
this is called the global effects but you know that is the reason why though we have certain positive aspects with respect to liberalization there are certain negative consequences and all these are the negative consequences and our answer should be option 4 very 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 important clear so hope you are understanding very easily and clearly like this you need to understand <coughs> next so when it comes to you know you have another concept called foreign capital flow you are coming across with the foreign portfolio investment this is called FPI <coughs> after the economic liberalization of 1991 India started attracting investments from foreign countries in two different formats one is a foreign direct investment FDI second one is a foreign portfolio investment FPI FPI is called hot money hot H-O-T hot money please write down write very clearly listen to me carefully F P portfolio foreign portfolio investment is also called heart money I will tell you what is the meaning of this so when it comes to India if the money is coming to India in the form of a foreign direct investment the money is coming with respect to the investment in companies and providing services so when you are establishing industries and providing goods and services those companies will not be shut and fly off immediately no because they are investing a lot and because they are investing a lot they want to earn a lot that is the reason why coming and going is not possible through FDI foreign direct investment but when it comes to foreign portfolio investment as I told you it is called heart money we cannot touch it what is the meaning of this I will tell you now I will tell you my dear friends listen to me very clearly and closely pay full attention and complete attention please be aware of what I am going to tell you now we have a stock market in India popularly called share markets so many companies are listed over there and their progress we can see through sensex and nifty being an individual i can buy shares of any company that are listed in the share market nobody can stop as an individual i can buy the shares as a company also i can buy the shares in the share market if i buy certain shares in a company today how long should I hold those shares that is important there is no limitation now I will purchase say thousand shares from a company the next minute I can sell it off now I will be purchasing I will sell tomorrow now I will purchase I will be selling after one month now I will be purchasing I will be selling after one year that is my interest point number one right another point whenever the money is flowing to a particular place whenever money is flowing into the market the prices will increase when people have started investing more in the share market the share prices will go up that is called bull bull run the share market is surging stock market is surging that is called bull prices are increasing prices of the shares are increasing increasing because more money is flowing into the share market more people are investing money more people are purchasing the shares as more people are purchasing the prices are increasing that is a positive sign so other people will also come forward and invest more so that their investment will be increased and later by selling them they can earn the 
profits this is what exactly is the share market is but all days are not rosy days the people who have invested today by looking at the market fluctuations if they come to know that there is something going to be wrong in the market then people will start selling their shares and they will start taking money the moment you are taking money back from the market the prices of the shares will fall and the people who purchased at the high prices they are forced to sell at the low prices because they are losing but the people who purchased at low price they sold at the high price and they are coming out with the profits that is the reason why everybody cannot make profit everybody cannot make loss some are making profit some are making the losses that is all depend on you know how exactly and when you are entering into the market that is the share market but we are discussing about the foreign portfolio investment is nothing but the foreign companies are investing in indian share market if an individual is investing in a share market will be investing at, with a limited money indian companies are also investing with more money but when the foreign companies are investing the foreign individuals are investing they are investing huge money they are buying huge shares when they are investing huge money huge money is entering into the market leading to the surge in the price of the shares and people will get attracted get attracted and a large number of people will start investing money expecting that it will raise further but after some time by taking the clues from the global market the foreign portfolio investors they will withdraw the money they will sell their shares and they will take back the money they invested hugely causing increase in the prices of the commodity shares and they are withdrawing hugely along with huge profits and the prices will fall down that is the reason why portfolio investments are called heart money that is not our real money the money that is entering into india through fdi is the real money am i clear and that should be calculated with respect to our foreign exchange reserves not fpi fpi will come fpi will go that is not part of our foreign exchange reserves when i say foreign exchange reserves i am taking my fdis into consideration clear i am clear next a <clears throat> see here foreign portfolio investment is the entry of a funds into a country where foreigners deposit money in a country's bank or make purchases in the country's stock and bond markets so this is called the speculation market they speculate that the money will you know the uh, prices of the shares will increase they invest more and the prices will increase they sell at the high prices to make the profits speculation a foreign portfolio investment is a grouping of assets such as stocks bonds and cash equivalents these are held directly by an investor or managed by the financial professionals meaning is simple as an individual or a company if i am buying the shares in the market i can manage my shares on my own or i can appoint some specialist to monitor my assets assets means stocks clear this is the foreign capital inflow similarly when it comes to balance of payment this consists of two components one is the current account second one is the capital account the money that is coming to india in the form of you know investments with respect to companies that is falling under capital account but when we say current account current account is nothing but the account that shows 
the income and expenditure of the country with respect to the outside world when you are exporting you are earning when you are importing you are spending and those records are mentioned in the current account important the current account records the value of exports and imports of both goods and services and international transfers of the capital current account measures the nation's earnings and spendings abroad and it consists of the balance of trade net primary income or factor income and net unilateral transfers that have taken place over a given period of time that is indicated in the current accounts capital account is the records of the net flow of investments into the economy that is called capital account current account capital account put together is called the balance of payments is that okay so please remember this one now let's go ahead look at this which of the following statements is or true regarding the foreign exchange reserves in india just now we understood see here india's foreign exchange reserves are built through foreign capital inflows india's foreign exchange reserves are not built through current account surplus right so hope you understood the question hope you will be able to answer the question look at this both a and b both a and b right and when it comes to unlike india russia and china are built on current account surplus clear so this is regarding today's class where we have discussed regarding economic reforms and specifically agriculture reforms we try to understand what is foreign exchange right fdi fpi current account and capital account clear and that's all for the day hope you understood the class very clearly right hope you wrote down all the points and revising the points uh, time and again so that you know uh, you will be gaining the confidence thank you so much and i wish you all very very good luck and i will see you in the next session